example, power, there's been the privatization of the sector. How would you, uh, what would you suggest in for the coming incoming government in the way they could handle this uh, sector? One thing I want to assure you is that we are careful in uh, articulating what the position is so that they have a clear picture of what is on ground. Then they will be at liberty. I know that you would want me to suggest that, yes, they should continue from what we are doing. They should continue to diversify the economy. They should continue to do this. I'm not going to give you such uh, suggestions. As far as I'm concerned, the responsibility of this administration is to give appropriate account of what the status is. Then from there, when they quickly appreciate what the status is, then they can apply their own uh, method in addressing the, the challenges. And uh, I just have no doubt whatsoever at all that uh, President Buhari and his team will know what to do. President, uh, General Buhari has talked about the issue of uh, how he wants to focus on the fight and corruption and all of that. What's your perspective on that? Every government had fought corruption. Abbasanjo fought corruption. Good luck fought corruption. Buhari fought corruption during his uh, first uh, outing. General Mohammed fought corruption. So it's still the same fight continuing. So there is no... No, I do remember that uh, when we came in uh, 99, the first bill Abbasanjo sent to National Assembly, I was in National Assembly, was the bill on anti-corruption, which created ICPC. And the central team for which he said he was going to do was to fight corruption. So the fight against corru corruption is, a, is, is, a, is a, a fight that had run through every administration in Nigeria. So there is nothing to, to again talk about it. So if the, if the incoming president says he's going to fight corruption, it's one challenge every administration must face. And uh, that is good enough. The president in its campaign said that he was going to uh, implement if he wins, if he gets back to, if he gets re-elected. But now, what do you make of the report that is on ground at this confab? Well, what was uh, quite unique about the report of, uh, about that conference was that one of the terms of reference of the conference was that they should recommend modalities for implementing their report. And they did. And you recall that some time back, the Federal Executive Council approved the modalities recommended by the conference for the implementation of his uh, report and gave, gave uh, several directives to respective agencies of government to set in motion the strategy for implementing the report. So for me, it's part of what we are handing over to the incoming government. And more particularly, the report of the conference being the will of the people. I believe that the next government will implement the report. How fast do you think the incoming government should act on that report? I don't have to benchmark their speed. By the time they get the, what we are handing over to them and they assess it, well or good, they will determine their speed. So when the new government comes, they will now follow up, depending on their priority. So you can't ask me to benchmark their speed, because they will have their own priorities, and they're not new. President Buhari is not, it's not a newcomer to Nigerian politics. So I can't sit here and say he should run, when I know that he knows what to do. Yes. Tell us, we, we saw uh, a couple of uh, several appointments and sev several uh, disengagements just uh, in the last few weeks. Why did they, this come? President Jonathan is in office till he hands over on the 29th of May. So why wouldn't he exercise the functions of his office? One wonders why he's coming at this time. There are a lot of them. Because they are due for this time. And there's no any other sinister motive behind all of this. I don't know what I don't know what motive you want to read into it. What would be the motive? An appointment is an appointment. If the president, the incoming president, comes in and chooses to to drop the person for whatever reason, it's a, it's, a, it's an appointment. It's, a, it's the appointment is 
at the discretion of the, in fact, at the discretion of the president. So what does it, what would be the motive? What, what really would be the motive when the incoming president has the powers to, to do otherwise if he's chosen? There's no, there can't be any motive. They are done because they are due. So the person that will be coming in as a new SGF, how enormous is that work? And what kind of uh, uh, burden would a, would a person be looking at uh, coming to, to embrace? Well, I am sure that the, uh, the incoming president will also be, be conscious to uh, appoint uh, somebody who has the capacity to cope with the work, but not just capacity who would focus on the work and not combine it with anything. And when I take on the job, the first thing I resolved within me and my God was that my reputation I will put aside, my mouth I will put aside, my eyes I will put aside, my, my name I will put aside. And I will only be seen, be heard, and be assessed through the administration I serve. And so it was a committed loyalty to my boss. And because I was committed to my boss, I, I, I didn't look sideways. And I was able to enjoy his confidence to the end. In the light of uh, the outgoing administration, what do you think was a major challenge? Well, running Nigeria is a big challenge in itself, but more so restructuring the economy refocusing the economy was also a very great challenge. And I can tell you too that redirecting the polity was as much a great challenge. But the administration had had its own trying times, like the first subsidy times and all that. But those are just the normal thing any administration should expect. Of course you know that in the life of this administration you have so so much uh, labor, labor challenge, or rest challenges and all that, but those are neither here nor there. But I think the administration was simply focused on making sure that the, the country had a drive forward. And I can tell you that very little, little, many, many little things that otherwise were neglected and were not done, were pushed through. Take, for instance, the power privatization, the railway rehabilitation, rehabilitation, then the rebasing of the economy. Are uh, certain things that successive administrations, you know, were not able to put in place that had been pushed through. So, a great, a great, a great, uh, a great challenge, really, pushing the economy forward and uh, putting the country in order. Of course, if you ask me that I must name a single greatest challenge. is the challenge of Boko Haram. But thank God we are getting over it. There's been a lot of controversy in the choice of the next Senate president. Tell me, do you think Zoni should be considered for that position? I may not have an advice for you. But I will not allow you to go on to your <laughs> <laughs> I I will not have an advice for you. Allow the next government to sort themselves out. But what did I tell you? What Dr. Road, and uh, each time I remind people that Nigeria is a country where the best appears impossible, but the worst will never happen. So you may see some bickering, some challenges, some quarrels, some. But at the end, the worst will not happen. So don't worry about what is happening about who becomes the Senate president. On that day, the Senate president will emerge and the Senate will move on. So don't lose sleep at all about uh, whether it will be by zoning or by ranking or by uh, whatever. The important thing is that the rule says the Senate president should be elected. So that the election will hold at the floor of the chambers and somebody will emerge. Why do you lose sleep about that? <laughs> Thank you so much. But before you go, tell me uh, if you have a last word to say about the administration you served and this opportunity to, to work as an SGF to serve Nigeria, what would you say? Well, let me just simply put it this way. I am happy that the administration I served is handing over a peaceful Nigeria to the incoming administration. 
And of course, without peace, there can be progress, there can be development. I am happy that the administration I have, I served, is handing over in Nigeria that has the confidence of the international community to the next administration. I believe that the next administration has the widest latitude to take off peacefully and exert their own contributions in the country. And for me, it's, it's, it's a major, it's a, it's a legacy. Thank you so much, uh, former Senate President, uh, the Secretary to General, uh, you. the Government of Federation, for talking to us on China's television. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And that was our conversation there with uh, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation on the issues relating to transition and the performance of uh, the Jonathan administration. We go on a short break, and when we return, we're going to get another perspective. This time, it's going to be coming from the Buhari side of the coin. Join us again.